Ladies and gentlemen, it's with the greatest pleasure that I ask your bride and groom today to start the speeches, Emily and Matt. I'll start. Okay. As you can tell, we're prepared as always. No. Very last minute as always. Right. Yours up, Ray? Yeah. Cool. It's on? Right, perfect. <laughs> Hello, all. Uh, we just want to say thank you for all being here with us on this magical day. Uh, morning. <laughs> Our friends, family, and wedding party have gone above and beyond to make today truly unforgettable, and we've been awestruck by the love that we've received from everyone. The only thing that would have been uh, made today better would be sharing it with our two beloved Bengals. <laughs> <laughs> We're on the cake. <laughs> Enough with the jokes now. We just wanted to say thank you to our parents and step parents, those present and not, uh, for raising us to be the people that we are today, in especially including the wine education. <laughs> Uh, we have a few thank yous today. Um, so without these people, today would not have been possible. So first, we'd like to start with... We would like to thank Mike and Fee, or as I like to call her, Fifi. <laughs> She's the only one that's allowed to call me that. <laughs> for providing the bar tab for tonight, which is, we are very grateful for. <laughs> Go mad. <laughs> Do you want to give presents? Yes. So. Where's the bottle? The bottles. She's <coughs> <coughs> coming. Come. Right, we'll move on. Next one. There you go. We'll, we'll come they'll, back they'll to that. They'll be there in a second. Yes. <laughs> right. Uh, also, I'd like to say thank you to my dad and Debbie for helping with a few of the costs for today. You also have a gift, which Abby hopefully is getting. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Wait. That was me again. <laughs> right, um, if you don't pay for the alcohol, you don't get the class. <laughs> yes. uh, I'd like to say a massive thank you to my amazing best friend Chris for being an awesome best man today. Although I might retract that after hearing your speech. <laughs> so we've got you a gift. Don't ask. Keep going. Go Keep reading. Okay, I'm still, still reading. Yep. I'd also like to step, uh, thank my brothers Dan and Charlie, as well as Richard, for being my groomsmen, and they've done an amazing job today. So if you'd like to come up and get your gifts too. Oh. Oh, Abby's here now. Right, so. Oh, I don't know. I'm sorry. Yeah. There we go. I just saw. I just saw CH. Yours is different, though. Who are these three for? Put them down. Put them down. Put them down. Who are they for? Put them down. Give them away. We haven't said all the names yet. We haven't said all the names yet. Right now we've got these. Mum and Mike. Hello. Oh, thank you, darling. There we go. Dad and Debbie. Oh, thank you. You are welcome. Thank you, darling. Right. I get my phone back out. I'd like to say, how beautiful do all of my bridesmaids look? Yeah. Woo! I'd also like to thank them all for the help that they've been today and keeping me calm most of the morning. <laughs> I have got gifts for you. Um, you can either come up here or I can bring them out to you, whatever's easiest. Come up here, please. I'm lazy. These hills are high. So we'd also like to. Oh, go on. Uh, we'd also like to thank our flower girls for doing such an amazing job today. So if Bella, Kira, and Coraline want to come up, come on, Bella. 
Coraline. Has anyone seen... Oh, there she is. <laughs> Bless her. They've got little legs. Give them a second. <laughs> I'd like to say thank you to my amazing sister who has honestly gone above and beyond organising a surprise Hindu um, with Matt. I don't like the conspiring, you know, it didn't really enjoy. She also provided us with a very cute countdown present for today. Even if she did miscalculate, they were still fantastic. <laughs> I'd then like to move on to thank my nan and my auntie Penny for generously helping to pay for my gorgeous wedding dress. <laughs> also Penny. I'd also like to say thank you to Penny for helping, uh, for making the wedding invites. We can all agree they were beautiful. Uh, and the confetti as well. Make a bottle. <laughs> oh, she's got flowers. Come up. <laughs> well, we still have two full boxes of confetti if anyone needs some. Penny went a bit OTT with it. <laughs> Auntie Dev. Right, where am I? Just find where I am. <laughs> We're better. You've got the giant for it. Read. I am. Right. Uh, we also like to thank my Auntie Dev and Uncle John for paying for our amazing cake. So if you guys would like to come up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, never mind. <laughs> Suck it up. Thank you, darling. I'll put my phone in my pocket. I'll need that. Oh, thank you. Last but not least, we would love to thank Matt's nan. Oh, my God. For without her, we wouldn't have had the day that we've had today. And my God, I really hope that she would have been looking down with Grandad, having the best time of her life, having the, with the best view. Definitely. Thank you. Yeah. You too. You too All right. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Matt. Yes. <laughs> you bring a special kind of light into my life. Yeah, very, <laughs> very, very special. <laughs> and I can right. definitely say that no two days are ever going to be the same with you. I love our laughs, oh, your sense of humour, and your your matisms <laughs> and matsflations. <laughs> I love you so much, and I look forward to spending the rest of my life with you. Thank you. <laughs> love you too. So, Emily, uh, firstly, I want to say thank you for putting up with all my ranting and my ever so slightly obsessive love of cars. I'm not sure how many times I've probably said TVR in the last month, but probably about 100 times a day. So you probably fed up with that. Million. Uh, but yeah, so thank God you're a neat freak, cause if you, because if you wasn't, our house would be a pigsty. So also, I'd like to say... I very much look forward to spending the rest of my life of our house being nice and clean. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, but most importantly, uh, I want to thank you for making me feel loved. I look forward to spending the rest of our life together in this mad, mad world. Aww. Right, two more. <laughs> well, sure. So, I promise we are wrapping up now. This is last bit, probably. Without further ado, we would like to tote, raise a glass to everyone who's made this possible and to a bright future. Cheers. 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 You okay? Do you want a break, Chloe? Are oh, you alright? We'll go next. <laughs> Get over it. <laughs> Move on to the next one now. 
Do I have to stand? Yes. Okay. Go on, Chloe. <laughs> Hello, my name is Chloe. As most of you already know, I'm Emily's maid of honour and also her big sister. I'm sure some of you here today may have experienced some of our fallouts, and if you haven't, then you've probably been told. <laughs> we weren't always the best of friends, although now I'm grown up, I am so grateful for her, which isn't something I thought I would ever say. <laughs> Although I, now I am very grateful for her, over the years, I guess you could say I've never fully appreciated her. It's not until I'm sat here writing my speech, recollecting some of the greatest memories I have with her, that, and I realise what a heart of gold Matt has landed himself. Aww. So many memories to remember, but some of my favourites are you being the first person that I told that I was pregnant. <laughs> talking to you on the phone nearly every day in 2020 and to watch you and Corona you know, and Kira and <laughs> being an amazing aunt and loving them both. As for Matt, I may not have experienced as many memories with you, but let's face it, Emily's got years on you. <laughs> we have several different memories and that I cherish. As an example, tell, you telling me and trusting me that she was going to propose to Emily in Turkey. <laughs> Memories were we've had the day out with you and Emily with either of the kids. <sighs> Although when I first found out you was, em Emily was talking to you, someone online, I thought she was crazy. <laughs> Still am. <laughs> <laughs> Although I'm glad that you didn't turn out to be completely cr a crazy person. Just the right of amount for Emily. <laughs> I am so happy for you that you both have found your happily ever after, and I'm both re you both really deserve it the best. I really do wish you both the happiest and best of futures. Here's the happy couple. Hi, um, I'm Penny. I am Emily's aunt. <laughs> this is your job, isn't it? <laughs> um, it's really lovely to be here today. Um, I was really looking forward to seeing all the guests, actually, and everyone being together, because um, I think it's really important. So it's lovely to have you all here. Um, first of all, I'd like to congratulate Emily and Matt becoming husband and wife. It's amazing and been a lovely day. Um, and also this venue is really beautiful and I know how much uh, your nan had played a massive part in that. So, yeah, I hope, she, hope she's looking down on you. Um, time for a little bit of audience participation, if you don't mind. <laughs> If you live or you have roots in Kent, make some noise. <laughs> okay, time for the Essex lot. <laughs> and anyone else who hasn't made a noise, make a noise. <laughs> Lovely, thank you so much. <laughs> no matter where you've come from today, we're very pleased that, to see you all. Um, Matt, <laughs> you've been a big part of our family already um, and you're always um, um, very much entered into the spirit of things, um, like babysitting, birthdays, bell ringing, bell ringing <laughs> Christmas whodunits, taskmaster, <laughs> surprise Hindus. <laughs> wedding planning um so yeah your enthusiasm your participation um yeah is just oh uh, yeah it just shines through uh, so, <laughs> i'll be better off without it i think um so today is just a formality to welcome you into our family and i know fee mike 
Uh, Jeff and Debbie, um, I know you're really proud of Matt and so you rightly should be because he's a lovely man and I know he's going to do wonders for Emily going forward. So thank you. <laughs> So, a bit about Emily. <laughs> so, em Emily arrived into the world in a bit of a hurry, I believe, Cathy. <laughs> so, um, yeah, my, my brother Bob's uh, drove Cathy to the, the hospital when she was in labour, and they got to the accident and emergency doorway. 15 minutes. And uh, didn't make it into the hospital, and she was born in the car. <laughs> I'm just so excited. I can contain myself. I'm kind of pinned down behind my head. <laughs> oh, Chloe was there? Yeah, she was only still at the time. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so um, um, Emily was actually a really quiet girl when she was, when she was little. You wouldn't believe it. That's my line. <laughs> 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 no, she was perfect. <laughs> um, and she always had her head in books. Um, reminded me a bit like Matilda, I suppose. And I particularly remember her loving the Twilight series. Um, and she couldn't through and through. <laughs> and she couldn't wait to get the next book in the series. Uh, she also had a large collection of Bratz dolls. I seem to remember. <laughs> okay. Um, as we all probably know, Emily has an older sister, Chloe. Hi. <laughs> um, and funnily enough, I've got here, the pair of them would often fall out. <laughs> um, to the point where my mum, Nana, do you want to give us a wave, Nana? <laughs> um, had an extra bedroom built for them just to separate them when they came to stay at hers. Uh, thank thankfully, they have grown up um, and grown out of that now and are the best of friends. <laughs> so it's good job we're on the same line. <laughs> uh, Chloe, you've done a fantastic job of being maid of honour, as have all the bridesmaids and flower girls. <laughs> Can I just say, I still have a ring from the Hindu. Does anyone else? <laughs> I did find one the other day. Um, Oliver, your turn. Can you give us a wave, Oliver? Hey. <laughs> so, um, when Cathy was living and working away, um, Emily was sort of managing the home. And also Oliver. <laughs> Emily developed great skills at managing uh, Oliver and making sure he, he did his fair share of the chores. And she had lots of different techniques. I also remember she was threatening to cut the electricity off so that <laughs> to stop him playing his games. Um, so Emily developed great skills and um, I'm sure she's making sure that she, she's uh, transferred those skills moving on to Matt. <laughs> I'll pay for the Wi-Fi, though. So. Oh, <laughs> that makes a difference. Um, Haven holidays, a trip to Disneyland Paris, visits to France to Betty and Peters, our special memories of holidays we have all shared together. So Emily was very much into baton twirling as a young girl and teenager and even represented our country in the World Championships in Croatia in 2015. Woo! And 16. Oh, and 2016. <laughs> Um, so Marion and her daughter Crystal so Marion was the coach is, yeah. is that what she was and Crystal was her daughter um, and so they ran I think it's called Margate Jet Setters yeah. um, so I've been in touch with them oh. <laughs> <laughs> and they sent me some messages <laughs> so Crystal uh, remembers when you and her were learning an illusion so would you like to explain what an illusion is you know what's coming don't you <laughs> <laughs> What's an illusion? You spin, you spin round and you flick your leg up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Okay. So, um, I think Emily's already guessed what's coming next. <laughs> so, um, she remembers doing this illusion, which was to do with doing the splits up the wall. Um, and then apparently Emily starts to fart the whole way <laughs> up the wall and became stuck with laughter. <laughs> 
and she had to um, have help to get back down again. <laughs> Um, Marion says her best memories were at camp and you would stay with your twirling family in a caravan for the week often visiting the Moo ice cream parlour you were also the first in the team to achieve the spirit award what's the spirit award? it's a coaches award so you get international coaches at um, this big camp that we go to and an international coach gave me an award and you Apparently, Marion said you were the first one out of the whole of the Margate Jet Setters to ever get one. So it sounds like it's quite hard to get. So it's quite something. So well done, you. <laughs> OK. Um, so how did we first get to hear about Matt? <laughs> also, a story slightly touched on. I remember it really well. So does my mum. <laughs> <laughs> this was... I don't know what you're talking about. Here. No. <laughs> so in uh, around November 2016, so Emily would have been about 16, I think, um, and Mum had was paying for Emily's mobile contract at the time. Um, and to Nana's horror, she got a bill for £500 <laughs> in one month. <laughs> <laughs> so we, Mum, Nana and I sat Emily down at the table, um, which we've never done before, so this was really out of the blue. <laughs> and we had words. Uh, and also, <laughs> um, she mentioned that she'd been talking to this boy called Matt... From Essex, don't think they'd met either, no. um, and they were on the phone for hours in, in, into the early morning, which raised alarm bells for us as to who was Matt? <laughs> <laughs> who was he? Um, it turned out we shouldn't have worried, and perhaps it was a good investment. Uh, <laughs> although we didn't know that at the time. <laughs> uh, we can also appreciate now that Matt does have a lot to say. <laughs> Um, and funnily enough, Marion said, <laughs> uh, from, from the, so she's the lady from Baton Twirling, um, that Matt used to bring up Emily an awful lot. And in the I'm end... Huh? And vice versa. I got in trouble a lot because of you. Yeah, well... <laughs> she got in trouble she went and hid in the toilet to call me. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the end, apparently, she would say Emily was away with the team just to <laughs> get rid of me. <laughs> OK, so um, Emily passed her driving test, uh, so she no, no longer had to take the train uh, to come up and see Matt in Essex. Um, just two weeks later, though, <laughs> what happened, Emily? <laughs> Crashed into a lamppost on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently two... Explain, explain that part of the road. Yeah. <laughs> it's a road you drive on it. <laughs> yes. It's a slip road to go on to an A road to get home. It's very tight. There, has, there have been more accidents there since. So the tree currently on its side there now. Yeah. So um, anyway, so that meant um, yeah. But luckily you're okay anyway. Yeah. But <laughs> so Emily made the decision to move from Kent to Essex to be with Matt um, and staying at Fear Mike's. And yeah, I think it was. Might have had something to do with the wine they were supplying. <laughs> <laughs> and this was just before COVID. Uh, and so they really got the chance to get to know Emily through lockdown. And I think there was lots of fun, actually. It was. Yeah. Lots of wine. Lots of wine. <laughs> Prosecco. Um, and they took Emily under their wings. And I know she has become like a daughter to them. And thank you very much for, for looking after her during that time. Um, and Emily, I believe, has also become an Essex girl. <laughs> Shut up! Uh, and since meeting Matt and his family, Emily has also been able to enjoy the delights of Turkey in Kalkan. Um, and if ever you fancy hiring a holiday villa in Turkey. <laughs> Rita.co.uk. <laughs> <laughs> We're still waiting to come. <laughs> um, Matt has had a real clear vision about his future right from the offset. Offset. Um, cars. I, I'm not sure what the order in this, but cars. cars, cars, cars yeah. Cars. cars deposit cars. for a house. Uh, finding a girl. Uh, getting cats. Two. Two cats. 
Uh, buying a diamond engagement ring. I wasn't sure the carrot, but I could probably guess. But one, one yeah, one carrot gold. Um, and getting engaged and then married. <laughs> so you've achieved an... <laughs> what was that? <laughs> anyway, um, and it's an amazing achievement, Matt, but I wonder what's next. But I think you've just said something about TBR or... Yes. Is that on it? Next year. Next year. <laughs> there's a 10-year plan, Penny. OK. There's a, there's a, <laughs> anyway, Matt, you are Emily's Prince Charming, and like all good fairy tales, I'm sure you will both live happily ever after. Can I ask you all to uh, raise a glass for Emily and Matt? Emily. Oh. Oh. Cheers. Cheers. Fifi. Well done, Penny. Well done, Penny. Yeah. <laughs> Right, well, Matt and Emma only gave me about uh, two, three weeks' notice to do this speech. So, and I said to Matt, you're not expecting me to say nice things about you, are you? Um, so here goes. Um, because I haven't always been the proud parent that stands before you now. Because when Matt was three, he murdered his hamster. <laughs> and I was convinced I'd given birth to a serial killer. Now, Picky, the aforementioned cuddly, furry, bright-eyed, innocent little rodent, was a beloved family pet who came to an unfortunate end on the end of Matt's tennis racket. It wasn't like that. Oh, well, come on to it. I'll come on to it. So Matt, taking an early interest in physics, pondered over the bounceability of a ball versus a hamster uh, and undertook an experiment to find out. And I'm here to officially confirm the results. <laughs> the ball won hands down. <laughs> because hamsters, unfortunately, lack any meaningful degree of springiness. Now, in hindsight, it's a wonderful thing. And I can now see the stirrings of his amazingly curious neurodiverse mind. And so the uh, crime can, I think, be downgraded from manslaughter. <laughs> <laughs> to manslaughter, rather. Sorry, from, from murder. Um, I think. But at the time, I was just cradling a dead hamster and sobbing hysterically down the phone to my mother. Serial killers have to start somewhere. <laughs> but going right back to the start, Matt was born on a snowy January evening in 1997. And despite being a fairly standard newborn, in a few months he grew into the fattest, ugliest baby <laughs> you have ever seen. And if you don't believe me, my sister has photographic evidence. <laughs> so stand up, Deb. Stand up and let us all see. Oh, spin the room. Spin the room. <laughs> Can I just say, at the time, my sister was the only person that agreed with me. Right? Like a shot, eh? He had the face, exactly, the face that only a mother can love, but this mother knew he was ugly. <laughs> <laughs> but can I just say, so unattractive was he that when I went back to the uh, reunion for the antenatal classes, <laughs> the midwife took one look at him and she burst out laughing. Rude, just rude. <laughs> And Matt's favourite game as a toddler, and I know Jeff will remember this, was hide the poo. Um, so I'd walk into his playroom and be greeted with a god-awful smell, and then ensued the frantic hunt in every nook and cranny to find the offensive item. Yeah. Please tell me if any of this isn't, isn't accurate, Matt. Yeah? Okay. Okay. No, yeah okay. <laughs> so thankfully he stopped this before he started preschool, and at preschool was where he met the other love of his life, Chris. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, he does love that. I do he he does love it, yeah, he does love it. <laughs> What's that mean? Now, the thing is, school for a young boy with undiagnosed autism and ADHD had its challenges, and it was, was with a huge sense of relief that his ADHD was uh, diagnosed when he was 10. And this started Matt's amazing journey with ADUP, um, and Add Up, if you don't know, is the most incredible support group. 
um, Matt soon became a fun favourite down at ADAP, and he was given the name Textbook <laughs> as his nickname, because if you ever wanted a textbook definition of a child with ADHD, you need look no further. <laughs> and it's absolutely um, no way that Matt could have got married today without his um, second mum, Lindsay from ADAP, and sh uh, sorry, Sheila, rather, and Lindsay, sorry, <laughs> being here. And... Uh, we as a family can't thank them enough for the support that they've given Matt and us as a family over the years. Um, moving on to secondary school, Matt was, was really badly bullied. Um, and ADAP was his safe place. Um, and the love and support shown to him was just absolutely incredible. It was a complete lifesaver. Um, and I was so proud of Matt with the way he handled his first really difficult few years at secondary school. Because you just buckled down, Matt, didn't you? You got on with it. Um, he was really tenacious, he was resilient, and he was really brave. And he had a strong mummy behind him. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and I recall one occasion of waving him off on a school trip to France. Um, and he really wanted to do this, this school, trip, school trip. And it broke my heart, because I stood there, and all these other kids got on the coach with their friends, and he got on, on his own. Um, and he was so brave, because he wasn't going to let those bullies stop him. And I, I was just so impressed with him. And at all this time, the only friend, friend Chris had in the world, sorry, Matt had in the world, <laughs> was Chris. I, I wasn't my only <laughs> yeah, friend. Yeah, Chris had quite a few friends, but Matt only had Chris. Yeah. Now, they went to separate schools, but Chris's loyalty was absolutely vital to Matt's well-being during this time. And it's where you got your nickname, St. Christopher, from me, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and these two have an amazing bond. There's a real love and affection between them. Um, I can't believe they didn't, well, die in adolescence, actually, <laughs> um, with Not some much. of the scrapes they got up to, but I suspect Chris might cover that in his speech. Um, thankfully, the last two years at school were a lot happier for Matt. Um, he worked really hard, he did really well in his exams, and he secured his dream job at Ford's. Um, and as others have mentioned, he actually mentioned it himself, you might just have noticed that Matt has the very slightest of interest in cars. Huh? Um, and very sensibly, he chose a profession working with the object of his obsession um, and being surrounded by fellow petrol heads. So he's found his place in life. He's found his tribe. Now on to finding a partner. So Matt showed the same determination and resilience in search of a girlfriend as he had in getting through school. And at this stage, that fat, ugly baby had grown into a slow, tall, slim and rather handsome, if I must say, young man. <laughs> So Matt didn't actually have too much trouble getting likes on the dating apps. It was what came after that was more problematic, more problematic. And Matt's autism diagnosis came at this point, and that helped him perhaps to understand why relationships posed some difficulties um, for him. Um, because girls, when they were confronted with Matt's quirkiness, you know, didn't necessarily stick around. But you know what? He just kept picking himself up and he kept carrying on. Honestly, his tenacity and his resilience are absolutely incredible. And then came Emily. Oh, yes. Now, I first met Emily when she popped in for a coffee after their first date. And in walked this 16-year-old girl sporting bright red lipstick. And I thought, I like her. <laughs> I liked her even more when she moved in and she'd regularly clean out my fridge and reorganise my cupboards and my drawers. And I really, really missed that. Uh, Mike liked her for a different reason, because she was the only one stupid enough to laugh at his jokes. <laughs> um, and over the years, Mike and I have come to love Emily as our own. Um, I couldn't have any more children, and Emily is definitely the daughter that I never had. And Mike was just overwhelmed at the honour of walking her down the aisle this morning. Um, and we couldn't be happier, Emily, to officially welcome you into the family. Um, Emily is a kind, decent, loving, caring young woman who manages to cope somehow with Matt's quirkiness. And love has blossomed. Now, for those of you who don't know Matt that well, and for the amusement of those that do, um, I thought I should give you some indication of his quirkiness that I keep mentioning. Because Matt is very good at compliments. <sighs> Hold on to your hats, guys. <laughs> After I helped Emily to secure her first job, Matt said to me, Mum, you're like a goddess in a baggy skin. <laughs> After eating a slice of our neighbour's beautiful homemade cheesecake, he informed her, if you were blind, you'd think that was the best cheesecake you'd ever had. <laughs> 
<laughs> it was a bit rustic looking. Um, and despite being an incredibly hands-on and supported stepfather, Matt's once, decla- once declared that Mike was just some random bloke that lives with my mum. <laughs> Uh, and on coming to see his grandmother, just minutes after she died, he declared, she looks more dead than Grandad did. <laughs> so he's quirky. He's annoying. Uh, he goes on and on about cars all the time. But he has the most amazing mind. He's really hardworking. He's funny. He's loyal. He's a thoroughly decent human being. And he never bears a grudge. And he was the best grandson ever to my parents. So, Matt, my lovely, it's been one hell of a ride. You've given me stretch marks. You've given me sleepless nights. You've given me more near heart attacks than I care to remember. But it's definitely been worth it. And I can speak for both Mike and I when I say how incredibly proud we are of you. Um, Matt, the really fine young man that you've become. And I know your beloved nan and granddad are looking down. Um, and they're bursting with pride at their big boy, as they used to call you. Um, and I wish you and Emily the happiness that you both deserve. And I'd quite like a grandchild or two at some stage, if that's okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I'd like to say let's raise our glasses to quirky minds, to dead hamsters, <laughs> and to a long and happy life ahead for this amazing couple, to Matt and Emily. <laughs> Sweetheart. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> I've got my fucking chair. Come on. Come on. He just couldn't let it go for one day. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not standing on it for the whole thing, so just, yeah, all right. Um, in fact, even now, to be fair, I'm going to go back where I was. <laughs> anyway, oh, if it's um, any consolation, I'm amazed that they gave me the mic, to be completely honest with you. I say some rather silly things. So, um, right, well, my name's Chris, and um, yeah, for those who don't know me, again, Matt's best friend for 15 and a half years. So I've known Matt since we were four, uh, when we met in reception, and initially we had a uh, love-hate relationship, so um, something that's continued until this day as well. <laughs> so, you know, um, yeah, we really became close uh, when I found out that he had ADHD, um, so, you know, which I'm sure everyone is shocked to find out about, because he is normal. Uh, <laughs> 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 it only goes down here from here, mate. <laughs> <laughs> right, um, lost where I was. Uh, yeah, because, you know, he's never jittering his leg. Uh, or he's uh, making you cry, you know, whenever he mentions things like pizza ovens, Bowers and Wilkins, or starts any sentence with, it's like. <laughs> Which I can guarantee you it's not <laughs> at all. But yeah, no, so, yeah, I'm going to be a little bit sweeter. So, <laughs> Matt was after a friend, and he found one, and look where it's got me now. I mean, <laughs> having to stand here and be nice. <laughs> Bollocks. <laughs> so, yeah, once Matt and I became friends, uh, we were inseparable. Uh, Matt introduced me to uh, another great friend of mine called Ben, and that was the day that our little Top Gear trio was born. I'm uh, Richard Hammond, Jeremy Clarkson, Ben was uh, James May. He can give you the explanation for that one, I'm sure. Uh, so, yeah, you know, we, we'd spend every Sunday that we could uh, making what we thought would be, you know, like Academy Award worthy movies uh, about aliens, soldiers, zombies, or just being kids and burning or blowing up anything that we could get our hands on from Mike's shed. <laughs> One day we will replace it, Mike. But yeah, there's, uh, there's many, many stories that I can tell you about our younger days, um, you know, from deodorant cans being lit alight, uh, burning a couple of watering cans filled with petrol, again, sorry, uh, <laughs> or uh, flushing an RC car remote down the upstairs toilet, which, <laughs> hang on, hang on, I've been called out here, Matt had his hand on it, I pressed the plunger, <laughs> Oh, all I remember was Matt going, it's gone. So then uh, that resulted in Mike having to unbolt the toilet. Um, 
Matt then had to put his arms in a carrier bag and scrape out. Fix that, you know? Yep. <laughs> let's, let's not go down, uh, go down far that rabbit hole. Ooh. Uh, yeah, it's uh, 3DS photos, if anyone wants to see that. So th see them in 3D, if Matt's got that with him. Uh, but yeah, I've been told that there are some stories that have to be saved for my wedding. So for now, I'm just going to tell the ones that make Matt look bad. So <laughs> it's pretty much all of them. <laughs> Sorry, bruv. Uh, right, so Matt is an engineer by trade. Yeah, he's built for cars, and thank God, because he would be a terrible librarian. <laughs> But, you know, things like Lego, Scale X trick, uh, whatever else, you know, would appeal to someone with a young, inquisitive mind like Matt's, you know, he would be absolutely obsessed with. But his prime purchase for me would have had to have been a water-propelled bottle rocket. <laughs> Brace yourself. So, obviously, as you can tell from that, it's powered by water. So, unless you're Matt. Because Matt realised that if it's powered by one liquid, it can be powered by another. <laughs> and, yes, it was piss. <laughs> <laughs> you also partook in that. It was we're, we're making you look bad here, mate, not me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fucking hell, mate. I wasn't meant to laugh. <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, so um, I am ashamed to say, but Matt, to this day, has technically given me a golden shower and... <laughs> Water, water doesn't get hot enough to wash away those urine soaked scars. <laughs> Fucking hell, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it's all coming back, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm good, I'm good. But yeah, Matt, he's, Matt's not just an engineer, though, he is also an explorer. So he'd give Ranulf fine to run for his money, but as Matt is Matt, he's not really built for long-distance treks unless it's walking to Canterbury or driving to Bristol to lose his virginity. <laughs> <laughs> I rehearsed that so many times, fuck it up. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, moving on. So, Matt, Matt had to make do with what he's got, and that was the underneath of Mike and Fee's house, and he convinced uh, me and my friend Ben to, uh, to, to go and, and explore under there. So, you know, once we're under the house, Matt's not a conventional man by any means of the word. Have you met him? You know, didn't use a torch. He built his own, which literally just resulted in a stick covered in tissue paper, doused in enough methylated spirits to wash every paintbrush in the UK. <laughs> so obviously he lit it. Yeah, not a good idea. Realised uh, pretty early on that it just burned all the toilet roll off. So, you know, he went back to the drawing board. So he just did it all again, but this time wrapped it in sellotape. <laughs> Yep. Still safe. But, yeah. yeah, so after that, you know, Matt, Ben and I, we, uh, we finished exploring, went back inside, and uh, we noticed that Fiat actually had the back door open. Yep. <laughs> so that was obviously to wear out all of the, uh, the smoke that had accrued in the house. It looked like a bonfire, in all honesty. But, you know, poor Fee, she blamed herself, thought that she burned a tea towel. <laughs> Little did she know. <laughs> So, you know, yep, sure enough, Matt then um, took away our plausible deniability and explained to Fee about the, uh, about the torch, and the selling off that we received was quite severe. <laughs> it was the most angry I've ever seen you, Fee. <laughs> Never seen that since. <laughs> uh, yeah, so to make sure that we didn't get a telling off like that ever again, we just decided that we wouldn't tell her about it, or <laughs> <laughs> we just wouldn't do it near the house. Onto the golf course. <laughs> yep. So yeah, but anyway, yeah, it's time, time to talk about the, the happy couple, sorry, that's not actually a joke, I just couldn't read my own handwriting, sorry. Uh, but yeah, you know, when Matt, Matt met him, yeah, he was, he was over the moon, and I was, because he'd give his right hand a, a breast for once, so. <laughs> yep. Yeah. But yeah, got one for you, mate, don't worry. <laughs> 
So yeah, when he was talking about it once, uh, he kept saying that she loves to suck, squeeze, bang and blow. But um, turns out that he was actually talking about a car with an auto cycle. See, that's, that's a car joke there for you, mate. I had to Google what that was. That is a joke. <laughs> Fucking hell. And he... <laughs> I'm going to get chased up. <laughs> anyway. Right, right, so I'm actually going to be nice here, like, Jay, this is me oh, being sweet. Don't spoil it, don't spoil it. I'm, I've got to look, like, relatively all right. But, yeah, Emily is the rock that melt... Uh, melt? Matt, you are a melt, but Matt has built, <laughs> has built his adult life on. And he told me pretty soon that after they met that he loved her. And, you know, called me cynical, but I thought it was too early for that stage. But who am I to question this boy? It's the same boy who believes that if beagles had to smoke, they would hold the cigarette between their paws. <laughs> He'll explain that one later, trust me. <laughs> Never go to a Chinese restaurant with this kid. <laughs> or uh, the, same, the, the same boy who tried to make cheese omelette his catchphrase. <laughs> or the man who once thought that he could uh, pin a fart on a girl in our class in year five, despite being caught dead to rights. <laughs> Farted on a laminate floor, yeah. <laughs> Ricochet. But no, genuinely, M, you have been a godsend for my best friend. You've got great patience with him, and yeah, let me just uh, catch back up. That was a bit of improv there. Uh, yep, and everyone knows that he can be a handful. You know that yourself. Uh, but you know what they say with enough Valium, anything is possible. <laughs> But yeah, I'd just like to say uh, thank you to all of Matt's family. Told you I'd be nice. <laughs> no, genuinely, you've all welcomed myself and them into your family, and you've always made us feel very welcome. So, truly, thank you very much, guys. Fee, Mike, Jeff, Debbie, Auntie Debs, Uncle John. Yeah, uh, obviously, great, great, uh, great, great, yeah. surrogate. There we go, grandparents. Uh, Shirley and Dem, obviously, they can't be with us here today, but without you guys, I wouldn't have my best friend. And, you know, you've all raised the most loyal, endearing, loving child and he's the best friend that I could possibly ask for, despite you being batshit. But <laughs> truly, I am, I am honoured to be your best man, Matt, and your best friend. And, yeah, I'm, I'm super proud of you and your beautiful wife. And, yeah, you have the best of all your family and your mate. And I just, I wouldn't change you for the world. Lord knows that I could, but... <laughs> I love you like a brother, mate, and I really do hope that you enjoy yourself today. So I'd just like to say there are some stories I'm not allowed to tell on the microphone. <laughs> We've had this agreement for a while. So if anyone wants to hear some of the um, no. underbelly stories, <laughs> some of the underbelly stories that I've got, you've got to find me at the bar, buy me a pint. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry about the tab there, Mike. Half of that spent on me. But no, honestly, I'd just like to say, can we just raise a glass to my best friend, his beautiful wife, and I do truly wish them all the best in everything that they do.